Uh, I'll be talking on uh, pediatric cataract uh, surgery step by step. I have no financial interest in this presentation. So pediatric cataract are a treatable cause uh, of childhood blindness. And uh, as we know, 41% of them are seen routinely when we do a routine examination. They can present to you with a different morphology. They can present to you with a junular cataracts, lamellar cataracts, or they can be membranous cataracts or sutural cataracts. And uh, unilateral cataracts are very important. You have to take care of trauma, uveitis, idiopathic, and also look for any ocular anomalies in these cases. What is important in bilateral cataracts, if you have, they are either familial or syndromic. And it's the unilateral cataract which you have to look for because the pathology lies inside the eye. So the indications and surgical timings are very important. Pediatric cataract surgery is complex and challenging. The goal of surgery is to clear the visual axis. So the timing is for unilateral cataract four to six weeks and six to 10 weeks for bilateral cataracts. Now the uh, pediatric cataracts are different from the adult cataracts and you have to take care of the axial length uh, also growth which is there, then the which IOL formulas Biometry, UA is very important in these cases. And uh, instrumentation and uh, GA, everything has to be taken care of. You should have high viscoelastics before you start your case. I'll be discussing on inc incision and the main, the capsular management and the, about the anterior vitrectomy. So this is a seven year old uh, boy who presented to us with a bilateral uh, lamellar cataract. We went ahead to do a side port incision. You have to always stay in the capsule for the, not only for visibility, but it makes the capsule soft and you have a controlled manner. Use always the atrata versus of micro scissors and grasp, press grasp, put a uh, high viscoelastic so that uh, you get a uh, adequate rexis, which is very important. If you lose the rexis, then most of the, your pediatric tract you are losing. Do a hydrodissection and the cortical matter is grumpy, you can do a bimanual and be very careful, meticulously you have to take all the cortical matter out. Do the anterior and posterior capsular polishing. Well, you can give in a hydrophobic uh, in the bag IOL, which is a single piece IOL and that fits very beautifully. Uh, never forget uh, to uh, hydrate the wounds and put a suture in these cases. So anterior capsule management is very important uh, because this capsule is thinner and stronger and more elastic than the adults. So you have to be precise in your surgical maneuver. You can use the cane nestials uh, two technique push and pull where you give two incisions and then continue it. You can use the vitrorexis or gypto is coming where you can get a circular rexis. Very femto they are saying, but it is difficult under GA to do these cases. Now coming, managing the posterior capsule, that is very important. And after you have done uh, adequate uh, CCC, anterior CCC, you just uh, uh, do it with a, uh, again, three millimeter around a PPC in the cases, uh, because that is very, very important. We don't want to have a PCO in this children and you do a vitrectomy. Now you can also do a, in a different method, you can give in a, uh, put in the intraocular lens, go about, just uh, hold the lens up, do the prick, do your capsular axis in these cases, and then you can use your forceps to complete the capsular axis, and then do a vitrectomy in these cases. But this uh, technique is more difficult, but in some cases you can go about to doing. But main important thing is taking care of the PPC. So posterior capsulotomy with anterior vitrectomy is a must for children up to six years. After till up to eight years, you can do a PPC in these cases without an anterior vitrectomy. Very important is this anterior vitreous phase, which has as a scaffold for the proliferating lens uh, cells has to be taken care of so that the PCO doesn't occur. You can have intraoperative problems uh, in form of intravitreal pressure and this wound leak. And this is another case which I'm showing you. Uh, sometimes you usually have this traumatic cataracts along with it. And here if you see, the anterior capsule uh, is uh, mostly thrown in these cases. So we don't know whether there was any vitreous or not. So we went ahead and what we, I was trying to do is, I was trying to do a rexis just keeping underneath. So I have left this anterior capsule which is torn about and did a rexis, a circular rexis so that once you get the rexes uh, clear enough, round enough as uh, CCC, you can go about slowly to take out the cortical matter which is there. And what happens once you, I was, huh, 
and you can take the cortical matter out, be careful, and you can still put the uh, IOL inside the bag in these cases. So, uh, so IOL selection is always a controversial if it is one year, but the infant uh, fakia study showed that uh, within four years there was no difference between these two groups, whether you put a fakia and contact lens or you put an intraocular lens, but the repeated surgery was higher in the IOL uh, if you have implanted higher within one year. So taking care of the post-operative inflammation is very important and PCO management. So problems are always there because uh, ocular dynamics is it's a growing eye. Amblyopia therapy has to be taken care of and multiple refraction has to be taken care of. So anterior capsulorexis is the key for safe IOL implantation. And do not fear to for an anterior vitrectomy in children in most of the cases. The IOL should be inside the bag and never leave the wounds uh, without suture. Uh, because you may have difficulty and multiple times you cannot take the children for GA. So be prepared for all type of surprises. And it is just said that if you are dealing with a pediatric cataract, the journey has 